ran to the guest bedroom where Uncle Hugh had slept. Maybe Hugh would be back by now. Maybe he could tell Finn how to look after Wally better, how to bring him back to life. Maybe the water in the school bathroom toilet had hurt Wally in some way, although that didn't seem likely. Wally had been lively enough during Mrs. Holstein's Latin class. But Hugh was not in his room. His bed was made up, and his two suitcases lay neatly on top of the bed. One case was closed, the other was open, with clothes and books tightly, tidily packed. That gave Finn some encouragement. Hugh must be due to come back soon. Finn went upstairs, took Wally out of his backpack and stood him on the windowsill amongst the rock collection again. He cracked open the window and said to Wally, You can smoke some cowdy if you want, Wally. I won't tell. But the very special Scottish paperweight remained as boring and lifeless as ever. Finn's dad hollered up the stairs. You better come down here a minute, Finlay. I've just had the school on the phone. Finn found his dad sitting in the kitchen. Finn loved his dad dearly and hated to ever let him down. David MacDougall was a kind and quiet soul, a little below the average height and weight for an American man. He didn't stand out in the crowd and he spoke quietly and seldom. He was absent-minded and would forget to eat unless Finn's mom put food in front of him at regular intervals. David MacDougall lived in a world of creativity and art writing articles and giving lectures. Finn remembered a time when he found his dad absently eating Riley's dog food out of a bowl he had found in the fridge, thinking it was some new kind of meatloaf. Finn worried much more about getting in on his mom's bad side. She was a firebrand. But Finn's dad just looked at his son with his sad, intelligent eyes and spoke softly. I hear your Aladdin lesson was memorable today. Want to tell me about it, son? Finn looked nervously around. Your mum just left to run some errands in Magnolia Village. She won't be back for at least half an hour. Finn gave a brief account of his encounter with the sixth grade bully in the bathroom and how that had made Finn late for Latin class and how everything had gone downhill from there. He left out any mention of Wally, of course, and tried to make the events in Mrs Holstein's class seem as bland and uninteresting as possible. It was no big deal, really, Dad. David McDougall raised his eyebrows. Well, I think it was a bigger deal than that, Finn. Tiffany's mom gave a much more colourful account, Finn groaned. She thinks that Tiffany may be scarred for life, though between you and me, Tiffany Kisselbutt needs to be taken down a peg or two. She's a mean-spirited, spoilt little brat. Finn had never heard his dad talk like that. He always seemed to find kind things to say about everyone. And I'm glad you stood up to the bully, Finn. I'm not going to ask you whether you put a stink bomb under his seat or not. I just know that you have got to stand up to bullies in life, son. Did I ever tell you about my first encounter with a bully? Finn was pleased that the conversation was moving away from himself. He shook his head eagerly. I was about a year older than you are now. We moved house when I was 13, so I had to go to a new school when I started 7th grade. I didn't like it at first. I had been teased a bit in the playground and was feeling pretty lonely and vulnerable. The first period after lunch was a double block of science. Instead of desks, they had long lab benches with big stools to sit on. Nobody liked the science teacher. Ben Seely was his name. He was mean and always picked on kids who sat in the front row so everyone tried to get to his class early to avoid being left with only the front stools. The back and middle benches were filling up fast that day, but I spied two free stools near the back. Just as I approached them, the class bully, Gary Irons, walked in. The teacher hadn't arrived yet, so Irons yelled out to me, Oh no you don't, McDougall. That happens to be my seat. He started swaggering towards me, winking at the other kids in the class that he knew. Nobody stood up to Gary Irons. The only other seats are right in front of the teacher's desk, and I could hear old Silly coming down the hall towards the class. Clump, clump, 
clump. So what did you do? Finn whispered urgently. He could almost feel the nasty science teacher's footsteps outside himself. You know, I don't remember feeling brave at all, Finn. I was scared of irons. I felt as if nobody liked me, I had no friends, and nobody was being nice to me. I just suddenly got angry. My day was going badly enough already. The last thing I wanted was to be picked on by Silly for an hour. So as Gary Irons approached, I picked up one of the stools and hurled it all the way to the front of the class. Several rows of students had to duck. The stool hit the blackboard and landed on its side beside Ben Seeley's desk. I was so angry that I hardly recognised my own voice. It sounded really quiet and dangerous. Well, if that's your stool, Irons, go and sit on it, because I'm staying right here. Wow, Finn said. Then what happened? Oh, about two seconds later, old Seely walked in looking fierce and very suspicious. I quickly sat down, so the only person still standing up was Gary Irons. What's going on, Irons? Seely said. Eh, n nothing, sir. My stool just fell over. I, I was going to get it. Everyone laughed. Seely knew that that was a pack of lies, but he didn't say anything. And you know something, Finn? By the end of that very day... I'd made three new friends, and Gary Irons never bothered me again. That is way cool, Dad. Compared with that, what I did today was nothing. Their conversation was interrupted by the ringing of the front doorbell. Riley started barking, so Finn went to grab hold of her while his dad opened the door. A tall, thin woman stood there, looking like a deranged black-and-white cartoon character. Her face was deathly pale, but with wild purple eyeshadow. Thick black face paint accentuated towering eyebrows, slanting eyes, and thin sneering lips. Her hair was jet black, cut short and straight, plastered close to her skull in a very severe style. Her ears, neck and wrists jangled with jewellery. The reek of sickly sweet perfume flooded the hall as she stood there inspecting Finn and his dad. She wore a long black leather coat and black high-heeled shoes that allowed her to look down on them. Finn's dad's mouth opened and closed, but no words came out. Mm -hmm.